Homer Pyle, USMC. Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. Okay. Now, if all you motor teams are set up, base plate secure, we can get ready to fire. Now, as some of you men may have heard, this will be our last day out here of practice on the old iron farm. Tomorrow morning, a construction crew will be here to start work on a new highway. Some of the greatest motor teams in history have left their craters out there. Guys who could put a mortar shell down a gopher hole blindfolded. So for old time's sake, let's make this last barrage a day that will go down and... Well, just what do you think you're doing? Oh, hey, Sergeant. I was just signing the mortar shells. You what? I'm Ammo Man today, and I was just signing my shells like I always do. Is he kidding me, Slater? Uh, no, Sarge. Gomer thinks it brings us luck. Luck, huh? Oh, yes, yeah, Sergeant. I saw John Wayne do this very same thing in Let's Go Leathernecks, and not only did he capture the enemy, but he also got the girl. Well, <laughs> you're not John Wayne, and you're not gonna get the girl. But you're gonna get something else if you don't start firing, and now. Oh, that's fine with me, Sergeant. There's nothing I like better than firing these mortars putting that shell down the barrel, and when it comes out, going whoosh, and when it hits, going boom, whoosh, boom, whoosh, boom. Well, in exactly five seconds, I'm going to give the order to fire. And if your weapon doesn't go off, I'm going to have the next round directed at you. Now, get ready to fire. All right, the rest of you men, commit fire! Looks like our guys are doing great for the last time out. Most of those shells are right on target. Yeah. Well, it's like I always say, Boyle. You give the men a little pep talk, the benefit of your experience, they come through for you every time. It's sort of what you call giving them confidence, you know? Who's that? What are they doing? Well, they're probably looking for old shell casings. They collect them for souvenirs, you know. Yeah? Well, this ain't a souvenir shop. They can get hurt down there. Hey! You kids, get away from that truck. Now go on, beat it. Don't come back until you're old enough to join up. Beat it! Move, 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 move. <laughs> Radford, three shells. Let's keep it moving, guys. We want to be back in time for noon chow. Dombrowski, three shells. That's it, Dombrowski. Easy does it. And look, boy, they're back again. Hey, you kids! This is government property. Now clear out of here. I'll have you under arrest. Probably a bunch of dropouts. All right, let's keep that ammo moving. Pile three shells. No, Sergeant, just two. What do you mean, two? Where's the other one? The other one? Well, I've only got two. See, look for yourself. One, two. I know, Pile. I can count. But you're supposed to have three shells. What happened to it? I don't know, Sergeant. Are you sure I'm supposed to have three shells? Pyle, every ammo man was given 20 rounds. We fired 17. 17 from 20 leaves three. That's right, Sergeant. Then how come I only got two? That's what I'm trying to find out, Pyle. Now, where's the missing shell? Well, I don't know, Sergeant, unless I left it out there on the mortar range. But that's not like me leaving loose shells around. Oh, really? I think it sounds very much like you. All right, everybody, out on the range. Come on, pile boy. Let's go have a look. I know where to find it, Sergeant. It's just got to be out there somewhere. All right, pile. Where is it? What did you do with it? Well, I just can't figure it out, Sergeant. It's got to be around here somewhere. It doesn't seem to be around here. How anybody can be so stupid as to lose a 12-pound mortar shell? That's what I'd like to know. How, pile? How? How? Well, I know how upset you are with me, Sergeant. And believe me, if we don't find that shell, I'd be more than happy to pay for it. Oh, that's real nice of you, Pyle. And while you're paying for the shell, maybe you can pay for the bulldozer that's liable to blow up. Bulldozer? Yeah. Or have you forgotten about that construction unit that's coming in? 
If one of their bulldozers should accidentally run over that shell, you know what's going to happen? It's terrible, Sergeant. It's terrible. And while you're paying for the bulldozer, you might as well chip in for the driver's funeral expenses. Oh, don't say any more, Sergeant. And do you know who's to blame for this stupidness, pile? I am, Sergeant. I am. No, pile. I am. You may pull a stupid stunt like losing a mortar shell, but me, I'm your sergeant, the one in charge, the guy who's responsible. When word of this gets back to headquarters, it's me that's gonna be calling the carpet. Hey, Sarge. Maybe somebody walked off with it. Walked off with it? What are you talking about, Boyle? Who would walk off with a shell? Well, maybe those kids you chased away. It could be one of them had sticky fingers. He saw the loose shell lying around, picked it up, and took off. Oh, come on. What would some kid want with a live mortar shell? Blow up his high school? <laughs> yes, yeah, Sarge, they take him into town and sell him to these war surplus stores. Huh? War surplus? Oh, I don't know, Boyle. It seems like such a long shot. Please, Sergeant, please. Let's go downtown and look. The shell might be down there. And just think how upset we'd be if they sold it. Please, Sergeant. OK, OK. I guess anything's worth a try. Come on, Pyle. We're probably the only Marines in history that ever went shopping for a mortar shell. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Uh, can I help you, boys? Yeah, uh, listen. Uh, has anyone been in here trying to peddle a mortar shell? Could be, Sergeant. We carry a complete line of shells, but we're always in the market for more. Uh, you got some for sale? Well, no, we haven't, but... We... But do you know where you can get your hands on some, right, huh? <laughs> well, you've come to the right place. We pay top dollar. No, look, I'm trying to tell you, we don't have any shells. No shells? All right. I'm always in the market for mess kits, pup tents, rifles, helmets, thermal underwear. <laughs> Say, uh, you know what I could really use? A grenade launcher. A grenade launcher? Why in the world would you want one of those? Well, it's for a special customer of mine, a big game hunter. Goes hunting for bear every year. Uses nothing but grenades. It's tough on the skins, but he always gets his quota. <laughs> Mister, I'm trying to tell you, we don't want to sell you anything. We're just trying oh, to get... I get it. You're a little shy, right? But when you do business with the T&L Surplus Store, we ask no questions. Just ask the guy who came in here a year ago and sold me a staff car. A staff car? An officer's staff car? Look, where he got it is his business. He used to come in here every week with a, with a duffel bag full of parts. We assembled the whole thing out in the backyard, then sold it to a used car dealer in Pasadena. <laughs> OK, OK, look, mister, we're wasting time. We're looking for a mortar shell, and if you don't have well, it... Wait, wait a minute. Mortar shells? Why didn't you say so? Have you tried our ammo department? Ammo department? Are you kidding? Right this way, boys. Here you go. Now, you boys just browse around and make yourselves at home. Help yourself, and don't forget, we give trading stamps. <laughs> Wait a minute, Sergeant. I think I see it. Where, Pyle? Right here. Right down at the bottom of this pile. Here. <clears throat> Hold that. <clears throat> you load these things. Get right to it. <coughs> Pile! Just a couple more, Sergeant. <laughs> Here it is. Uh-oh. My mistake. This is from World War I. Pile, get out of here. Well, I was just trying to help, Sergeant. Never mind. I'll do the looking. Just get out of here. <laughs> Well, I see you found our military accessory department. Anything in particular? Well, not really, thank you. I was just looking. Say, how about a nice set of captain's bars? Really impress the folks back home when you're on a furlough. Well, I couldn't do that. Impersonating an officer? Well, I'd never dream of such a thing. You're right. Good boy. I was just testing your moral character. <laughs> and you like war souvenirs? I got just the thing for you. Huh? Look at that. Gee, a Japanese sword. That's more than a sword, pal. That's a genuine samurai captured from a famous Japanese general on the island of Hayakawa. Feel that hand. Huh? Look at it. Handcrafted. Well, uh, it's been in the war. But uh, don't worry. We've got a lot of other things you'll be nuts about. Well, thank you. Not today. Maybe some other time. Yeah, uh, let me show you something back here that's very interesting. I guess that's just about it. Now uh, here, pile, and that's all there is to it. Come on, let's get out of here. 
pile. <laughs> pile? Kyle, what are you doing in that crazy outfit? Well, he just wanted me to try it on, Sergeant. Said there was no obligation. Yeah, I'll make him a good deal on it, too, Sergeant. Even throwing an iron cross. <laughs> get out of that stuff and let's get out of here. Well, and his war surplus stores. Some wild goose chase has turned out to be. Wait a minute, Sergeant. Huh? Look, look over here. In the pawn shop window. What's in the window? Right there next to the ukulele. I think. I think, I think that's it, Sergeant. I'm sure that's it. It's the shell. It's the mortar shell. Yeah, it's a shell, all right, Pat. But are you sure it's the right one? We well, see those white marks on it? Those are probably chalk marks. You know where I autographed it? All right, Pat. All right, if you're really sure. But just let me handle it. The guy probably doesn't even know it's a live shell. There's no sense in scaring him. Now, come on. Oh, hi, fellas. What can I do for you? Well, uh, we saw something in your window, uh, that thing that looks like a big bullet. A big bullet? Yeah, it's really a 12-pound, 81-millimeter mortar shell. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Now, yeah, sure. There you are. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, that's it. How much? Well, this is sort of a rare item. You know, not too many stores have this. I don't blame them. Those things can really be dangerous. Yeah, I guess maybe if it falls on your foot. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Being your serviceman, I'll let you have it for five dollars. We'll take it. That's more than fair, mister. The government paid a whole lot more for it than that. Here you go, mister. Okay, now wait, now wait. Uh, no, thanks. We'll uh, take it just like it is. No. We're in kind of a hurry. Yeah, but you don't know. No, this is fine. Thanks a lot. But, but, I got... Oh, we're really lucky, Sergeant. We are really lucky. Yeah, it was one chance in a million pile, and we hit it. And what's this car doing here? <laughs> oh, yeah. What's going on here? What is this thing? What did you try to sell us? Sergeant, that's what I was trying to tell you, but you wouldn't give me a chance. It's nothing without this. The lampshade? Yeah. You mean that thing is a lamp? You don't think I'd try to sell you a live shell? <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant. But that might not look too bad on your day. <laughs> I don't get it. Where could it be? I mean, a mortar shell just can't disappear into thin air. Well, there's only one thing left for me to do. I'll just have to write a letter to headquarters. A letter? What kind of a letter? To Colonel Gray from Sergeant Carter. Dear sir, it is my duty to inform you that because of the stupid carelessness of one of my stupid men, there is now a live mortar shell floating around the base. I realize, as platoon sergeant, that I am fully responsible for this stupid act, and I stand ready and willing to accept the stupid consequences. Please don't send a letter like that, sergeant. You just can't go around taking the blame for something I did. Wait a minute, Sarge. I've been thinking. What if that shell were still out on the range? What are you talking about, Boyle? We searched every inch of that range this morning. Well, I know that, but what if somehow it got buried out there? Buried? Well, yeah, it could have accidentally got covered up. Well, maybe it got covered up, but how do we find it now? By the time we get back out there, it'll be pitch dark. We could look for it first thing in the morning. The construction crew will be there in the morning. By then, it'll be too late. Oh, wait a minute, Sarge. You don't have to wait till morning. I just got an idea. <laughs> do you hear anything yet, Sergeant? How can I hear anything, Pyle, with you yakking in my ear? If you ask me, this whole thing is just a big waste of time. Oh, don't say that, Sergeant. I just know if that shell's buried out here, this mine detector will find it. I'll go over this way and look. Sergeant, Sergeant! What's the matter, Pyle? You find it? No, but I just stepped on a lizard. A lizard? <laughs> I give up. This is just another one of Boyle's stupid ideas. Let's get this stuff back to the Jeep and get back to the base. Oh, let's don't give up, Sergeant. Let me try it just for a few more minutes. Well, all right, here. Take this. Put these on. I'll look over this way first where the ammo truck was parked. I hear something, Sergeant. Where, Pyle? What'd you hear? I don't know, Sergeant, but it's just clicking away like crazy right here. Well, come on, Pyle. Let's start digging. I got 
it, Sergeant. You found it, Pyle? Good luck, good luck, good luck. You found it, Pyle. You found the shell? No, Sergeant, but I found the horseshoe. Lucky us. <laughs> horseshoe? That does it. I've had it. Come on, let's get back to the base. Well, can't we look just a little bit longer, Sergeant? I just know we'll come up with something. Oh, sure we will. Like maybe a rusty can of nails and, and some other kind of junk. Come on, let's get back to the Jeep. All right, stow that gear in the Jeep and get in. It's freezing. Well, what are we going to do now, Sergeant? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Pyle. First thing in the morning, I'm calling headquarters, and they'll call off those bulldozers. How does that make you feel, Pyle? All because of you, those bulldozers will not roll tomorrow. Well, I don't know what to say, Sergeant. If I knew where that shell was, I'd go over and kick it just to blow myself up. Would you, Pyle? Really? <laughs> that would be the first sensible thing you've done all day. Now, get in. <laughs> wake you up. What are you doing? Well, you remember this morning I lost one of my shells out there on the mortar range? Mm -hmm. Well, what I was doing is I was reconstructing the whole day, hoping that way I'd remember what I did with that shell. Did you figure it out? No. We've looked everywhere, the sergeant and me. I just don't know what to do. What does the sergeant say? Well, that's what's bothering me. If that shell don't turn up, Sergeant Carter will be held responsible. He'll have to take the blame. Well, fine, let him. If the sergeant's gonna be the goat, why worry? <laughs> well, I couldn't do that, Duke. The whole thing's my fault. Look, Gomer, go to sleep. We'll talk about it in the morning. But I'm telling you, if the sergeant's willing to take the rap, let him. You're in the clear. Hey, Sarge, what's the matter? I'm sorry, Boyle. It's a darn shell. I can't figure out what happened to it, and it's driving me crazy. Look, Sarge, you did everything you can do. Tomorrow morning, you report it to headquarters. I'll tell them to hold off on the bulldozing work, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Well, what's the matter? That stupid pile. He's got to get the book thrown at him. Huh? Look, Boyle, he's goofed up in the past, but this time it's serious, real serious. He might even face a court-martial for this. Who knows? He could get thrown in the break. Well, that's true. Yeah. I suppose I should just forget about it and let him go hang. Because he's in trouble. Real trouble. And he knows it, too. You should have seen him tonight. He, he was ready to kill himself. Well, he's not going to kill himself. So what do you say in the meantime we get some sleep, huh? Hey, uh, I suppose so. There's nothing more we can do about it tonight. Boyle, did you hear that? Yeah. Well, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. Somebody just set off a mortar shell. Huh? How could they do that? How should I know? Maybe they ran over it with a jeep. A jeep? <laughs> it's gone. Our jeep, it's gone. Well, why would anyone take the jeep? I just got an idea. And I hope I'm wrong. Hey, Sarge, that explosion, what was it? Uh, nothing, nothing. A uh, uh, truck just backfired. Go back to sleep. That's what I was afraid of. It was piled. The somebody that ran over the mortar with a jeep was Pyle. Well, how do you know it's him, Sarge? How can you be sure? I'll tell you how come, Boyle. Put two and two together. The jeep's gone, Pyle's gone. But, Sarge... He pleaded with me to let him go back out there. I said no, but he went anyway. He actually went out there. Well, Sarge, how do you know? Then where else is he, Boyle? Huh? Where? No. I guess he was determined to go out there and find it. Well, he found it all right. Sarge... No. He was plenty worried. He must have realized he would get a court-martial for this. 
Well, what would be so terrible about a court martial, huh? At least he'd be alive. But, Sarge, you're taking so much for granted. Why don't we go out there and take a look? Huh? Hey, Sergeant Carter, boy, I'm not glad to see you. Hi, Corporal Boy. Pilot, are you okay? Sure, I'm okay, but just wait till you hear the good news. I found the missing shell. I know, Pilot. I heard you're lucky you weren't killed. What made you go out there looking all by yourself? Well, I couldn't let you accept the blame for something I did. I mean, how could I live with myself? Okay, okay, now, what happened? Where was the shell? How did it go off? How? You'll never guess, Sergeant. You'll just never guess. No games, Pilot. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Where was it? Well, I was back in the barracks, and I was reconstructing my whole day out there on the mortar range, and there I was, firing my mortar, then suddenly I remembered that one of my whoosh booms was missing. Uh, what are you talking about? Well, right then, explain it to you, Sergeant. If you'll get in the Jeep, I'll show it to you. So then I came back over here to the weapons room to look for my mortar. And praise be, Sergeant, I found it. You found the mortar? No, the shell. You mean the shell was right here in the weapons room all the time? No, it was stuck right here in my mortar. Don't you get it, Sergeant? One of my whoosh booms was missing because my shell never fired. <laughs> I'll be done. You had a misfire. And then, just like the manual says, I came over here and kicked the mortar with the heel of my boot, and off she went. You had a misfire. You see, Sergeant, all this time we was worrying ourselves sick over nothing. Makes you feel kind of silly, don't it? Wait a second. If you fired this mortar off in here, that means that... <laughs> I know what's going through your mind, Sergeant, but I'm sure we can get it fixed before the rainy season gets here. <laughs> What makes you think we're going to find a missing jeep here in town? Because we looked all over the base boiler and it wasn't there. And you know what happened? Stupid pile left it parked somewhere last night with the keys in it and somebody stole it. You think so? Yeah, I think so. It didn't drive off all by itself, you know. It was stolen, Boyle, stolen. Hey, you see what I see? <laughs> Come on. How do you like this guy? Has he got guts? What? It's our Jeep, Boyle. He gave it a fresh coat of paint and put this canopy over it. Huh? Oh, is he gonna hear it from me? Hello there, Sergeant. I see you looking her over, are huh? You interested? I'll let you have her cheap. Oh, you will, huh? And you know what I'll let you have, mister? A few years in jail, that's what. What? You're gonna cut out robbing this government property once and for all, you crook. Robbing? Police! Wait a minute. Hold him, boy. Sergeant, I got a cop. Will you wait a minute? Police! What? Police! What? Police! Sergeant Carter! Sergeant Carter! <laughs> I found it, Sergeant. Guess where it was? at the motor pool. You see, I parked it in back of the weapon supply shack, and one of the fellers from A Company had driven it over there. See, I told you we'd find it. <laughs> All right, Sergeant, a perfectly honest mistake, and I'm willing to overlook the whole thing, if you'll do me one little favor. <laughs> Can you get your hands on a tank? <laughs>